Hello and welcome back. And that's right, can you believe it's been 10 years of WD Red? We have seen NAS evolve tremendously in the last decade or so. And all alongside that, WD Red has been evolving just the same. And for all of these years that we've seen WD Red evolving in all its different iterations, I've always maintained the same thing. And that is, you need to have the right tool for the job. What I mean by that is that NAS has existed in one form or another for over three decades. And for that time, the majority of that time was spent with them utilising drives that were not built for purpose. Right there at the beginning stages, you had drives that were built for domestic PC use. Low threshold use, low impact use. They didn't have the scale of data or necessity of access that we need today in modern NAS. But they did get bigger and better. And as NAS evolved, rocking into 2012, we saw the WD Red hard drive series. Now, when they arrived, these drives were built for multi drive RAID. They were built for scale. They were built for 24 7 use. In a word, they were built for NAS. And as NAS evolved over that time, so did the WD Red range. As things got bigger and better, we saw bigger capacity start to arrive. And as NAS started to get more compact, more portable, we saw 2.5 inch storage media arrive in the WD Red series. When NAS started to include M.2 NVMe drives, so did WD start to evolve their own SN700 range of M.2 NVMe SSD drives. And as NAS has got bigger and bolder and more rack mount, so did the WD Red Pro series arrive on the scene with larger capacities and larger bay storage support there. NAS ranges got bigger and so did the WD Red series. But that's all fair and well, but what sets a WD Red NAS drive apart from a standard domestic class hard drive? They've got to be the same, right? Well, wrong. They arrived with NASWare 3.0, very early innovation in the WD Red series, an onboard firmware that enables optimal performance, robust data protection, and seamless integration within a larger scale NAS environment. Now, this is combined with improvements on physical build quality of these drives, such as a multi axis shock sensor on board and dynamic fly height adjustment, meaning the drive could adapt to larger and more increasing loads and large and increasing physical deployment while still remaining reliable and able to protect your data. Of course, that wasn't the only innovation we saw, and soon afterwards we saw Helium Seal to Drive Technology, or Helo Seal from WD, which allowed reduced flow impact on those disks inside, thanks to that contained use. And the result was they could get thinner platters inside and therefore more platters. And that was how the WD Red Pro series arrived in up to 18 TB thereby increasing the overall range of capacities available while still maintaining that great stability. But it didn't end there, of course, because we've seen 20 and 22 TB drives at the time of recording. How did that happen? These larger capacities were made possible thanks to something WD coined OptiNAND Flash, an area of iNAND Flash held within the drive that stored the metadata normally contained on the individual disks inside. This made it possible for the drive to capitalize on larger available capacities, and therefore the WD Red series in Pro started to arrive in 20 and 22 terabyte capacities. <laughs> Of course, the other big innovation during that time that WD had clearly worked on for a while was EPMR, Energy Assisted Perpendicular Magnetic Recording. The process of applying electric current to the main right node during write operations. The result was an increased bit per inch on the platters there, allowing data bits to be closer together and therefore increasing the aerial density of the disks, another way in which larger capacities were provided. So OptiNAND, EPMR 
and the triple stage actuator which is more like the joints of an arm allowing greater flowing movement of reed from the disc is what allowed larger capacities and individual platters at the time of recording to reach 2.2 terabytes and that's only going to get better Ultimately, it is all of these things that's going to allow WD Red Drives to help you break the petabyte barrier easier and faster in the future. And it's been 10 years of WD Red, and I'm really looking forward to making a video like this in another decade. Thank you so much for watching. There should be a guide and a breakdown linked in the description over on NAS Compares. And if you want to learn more about NAS Storage and WD Red, do subscribe to the channel. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.